we're on, we're live. Oh my God, works again. <laughs> you know, it's always a little bit <laughs> of a, mm, is it going to work tonight or not situation when we depend on technology to communicate. And we are here together. Thank you, technology, for letting us be together tonight once again as I see Alpinari are with all of you and your names are coming up. You know, there are already 75 of you in the room. Yes. And um, I chose as my background tonight, a shot of the big greenhouse at Hyannis Country Garden that we very fondly refer to as the Taj, which is short for the Taj Mahal which was named by my friend Heather Holbrook um, because when it was built, it was so much grander than anything we had had there in the past that it had to be the Taj Mahal. So I'm just opening up chat here so that you can chat with anyone and I can chat with anyone and we can all chat together. So as you know, if you have joined me on Happy Hours before, I love it if you tell me in the chat window here on Zoom if this is your first time here. And I also love to know what's in your glass. If you have sat down with the beverage and are just ah, taking a breath and letting us be together with something so life affirming, I want to hear what's in your glass, whether it is a cup of herbal tea a glass of water. Yeah, that's what I've got right here. Um, a glass of water, whether it is a cocktail or a glass of wine or some coffee, whatever it is, you know what? It isn't the beverage that matters. What matters is that we are here together and we are celebrating a happy hour with plants. And oh, all of you guys have, you know, Every time I look at the chat for these happy hours and I see you have such interesting drinks. Every one of them sounds great to me. The green tea with honey, the Sauvignon Blanc. Oh my goodness. Uh, the Cabernet, ooh, a local honey tea drink. Sugar-free margarita. Sugar-free is always good, but never drink tea cheap tequila. Okay, <laughs> so moving on. Um, tonight's happy hour is about seeds. And if you ha know me at all, you know that I love starting things from seed. And I just can't wait to share the joy of that with all of you tonight. And if you, uh, this is your first time, what you need to know, number one, is if you want to, this is being recorded, okay? It is being um, broadcast on Facebook Live. You can always go back to Facebook and watch it. Although the image quality is less clear because I think it circles the, blo the globe at least four times before it lands in Facebook. So um, next week, Martina, the uh, web wizard at Country Garden, will get this up on the recording on our events page so you can watch it again if you need to. All right, number two, you can share it with other people to watch. Number three, as we are going tonight, if you want to remember something, take a picture of it with your cell phone, take a screenshot of it, um, all great. And oh, I've got people on here who are first timers. I've got people on who have been with me since the pandemic, which is when we started these things. And I've got people who've been, you know, on me 20 or more times. So thank you. Thank you all. So let's get right to it. This is how I work. All right. I will show you the main presentation. And then after that, I will come back to chat and I will answer the questions that you have posted in chat. And frankly, anything goes with the questions plant and garden related, right? I'm not going to answer questions about your relationship or training your dog, but I am going to answer questions 
about plants and gardens, whether it is about seeds or your vegetables or the hydrangea bed buds that are, yes, uh, swelling and now it's still cold, whatever it is, type it in chat. I will take, go through those questions top to bottom until we run out of time at six o'clock and it's time for dinner. And once it's hit six, if there are still questions that aren't answered, I save the chat and I will answer them on the Country Garden blog later, probably Monday. Okay, so that's how it works. All right, I'm so happy that you are with me tonight and let's get started with screen sharing. Here I go, I gotta press the green button. I gotta select the presentation. I've gotta click gray slideshow and here we are. We're talking about seed it. We're talking about how to grow things from seed, what things are easy to grow from seed, right? When to start them, all of that. And, you know, as I mentioned, I think starting things from seed is one of the most life affirming things we can do, especially in the winter time, uh, because seeing that new life, so perfect, so perfect in the winter. And, you know, in the winter, and particularly as we get toward the end of February and early March, we are wanting to start planting, right? And yet it's still winter. We are at that intersection of planting and winter and starting seeds is the way that you can have that satisfaction of growing even when it's too early to plant things outside. Now let's start off with a quick um, information about winter sowing because many of you are on social media, whether it is Instagram or Facebook, and you see people are winter sowing. So what is that? What that is, is planting seeds in soil outside right now and letting them go through the natural cold, 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 warmer, warmer, warmer until they sprout. But here's the thing. Usually on Instagram and on Facebook, you see this done in plastic jugs. Doesn't have to be. You know, I mean, yes, if you buy milk in big gallon plastic jugs, by all means use those, but this is not a requirement for winter sowing. All that's required for winter sowing are some containers of moist potting mix that are covered in some way to prevent the critters from getting at. And you know squirrels, they'll dig in anything, right? So that's all that's required. Moist potting mix covered to prevent critters and outside in the cold and the rain, that's winter sowing. So you could put things in pots. You could put them in flats as long as the flats have drainage, anything with drainage. You could put them in milk jugs. You could put them in wooden crates, whatever you've got in terms of containers. Smart pots, fine, right? Fabric containers, fine. Um, but this is not for heat loving plants, okay? Winter sowing is not for your beans or your tomatoes or your eggplant or your squash or your zinnias or nasturtiums. It is not for plants that like warmer temperatures. Winter sowing is for things that don't mind being cool and charred maybe lettuce, you know, perennials perhaps, violas, that sort of thing. Or any plant that likes a chilling period uh, in order to germinate. Now, the first thing that I will tell you, and I always say about starting seeds from, uh, starting plants from seed is to bring your reading glasses because you want to read the back of the seed packet because everything you need to know is there. Don't buy a seed packet if it doesn't have information on the back, all right? That's not a responsible seed company. All of our seed companies that we stock at Country Garden, they have great information that tells you what temperature, how many weeks, you know, this one is start 
start seeds eight to 10 weeks before transplanting. That's important information. That's like two, three months, right? Okay, sowing outdoors, not recommended in this case. And it gives um, information about growing it. Uh, it give, gives information about you know how long it takes for them to grow, how many uh, days it takes from planting the seed to harvest. Everything you need to know is on the back of those packets. Days to emerge, right? So you can know, can I expect this seed to germinate in 10 days or is it gonna take two months? That packet should tell you whether it's recommended that you plant it outside or inside these seeds, not recommended to start inside. Take this information seriously. Too often people are in such a hurry to get things going to get things growing mm. that they don't take the time to pay attention to this information. And you really need to do that. In this one, direct seeding, that means putting it right in the ground, this is for mustard greens, is recommended, all right? So read the back of that seed packet. If you can't read it with your reading glasses, get a magnifying glass or put it on a copy machine and enlarge it. Pay attention to that information. Now, there are many seeds that get planted directly outdoors that you do not want to plant inside. And you will be sorry if you plant them inside. And I will show a few of those to you in a couple of minutes. Um, but um, a lot of them, as I say, it will be shown on the back of the package. This is for a Mexican sour cucumber direct seed recommended. That means put it right in the ground. In our area of Cape Cod, that's the end of May, not earlier, okay, end of May, um, rather than transplanting it. Some seeds need light in order to germinate and other seeds need dark. Not that many seeds need dark, frankly, but violas are one of them. Okay, so that will also be clear from the back of the seed packet. And um, pay attention to that because if a seed needs light to germinate, that tells you that you should not bury it too deeply in the soil, right? Or you should not cover the flat or the pots that you are starting the seeds with something that's going to block the light. You want to use new potting mix or seed starting mix. I have used both. I have used regular potting soil, both Espom Espoma Organic and Coast of Maine Organic. I would not use cheap uh, discount potting mixes from discount stores. And I'm not just telling you that because I work at an IGC. Of course, I want you to come to Country Garden for shopping, but I'm telling you that because sometimes discount places, the reason they have that seed starting or that potting mix at discount is because it is old or it's been outside and gotten wet and then dried and wet and then dried could be a problem, all right? So get some good quality seed starting mix or potting mix. I have not seen a real profound difference between either of those although sometimes I use the regular potting mix just because they're in something with a little more substance from the get-go. So up to you. You can find organic seed starters, right? Both Espoma and Costa Maine make them, but do not use garden soil. I went out recently and I scooped this out of my garden. Looks pretty good, right? got some sand in there, looks like it's got a little organic matter in there. What's wrong with this? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with this. If I use this to start seeds, this particular pan of soil, I got wet to see what would happen and look what happened. I got weed seeds, right? Right away, this one, two, three, four, five, six. That was just in the first week. I got weeds germinating. Now, if you use garden soil, how would you know 
that that little seedling is something that was in the soil that's a weed, or how would you know if it's your plant? You don't know, okay? Plus, you will get rocks. You will see once I watered that, there are a ton of rocks in there. If that rock was on top of the seed that I put in there, my seed would not grow, right? You can get fungus, which is how people get what's called damping off, which is when the little seedling collapses. Damping off is always much more of a problem if you use dirt from the garden than if you use a quality seed starting or growing mix, okay? And you might even get bugs from this because many insects overwinter in the soil. So don't use garden soil. Now here is some good quality mix. This looks at first glance to me like a seed starting mix. And I put it in a great big bowl and I got half of the bowl on this side wet and this is dry, okay? You wanna get your mix wet before planting. And that's because you need to break the surface tension of the peat moss that's in these mixes. Uh, if you just put dry mix in your pots or your containers and water it, the water is gonna run off the top and down the sides. It's not going to penetrate into the pot of soil. Uh, so you want to break the surface tension and you do that by mixing that seed starting mix or potting soil up with your hands, put on a glove if you don't wanna get the mix under your fingernails, but that's how you do it. So first you moisten the mix by mixing it up with some water with your hands, then you put it in the pots, then you water again and let that excess water drain out of the containers that you're starting in, and then you sow the seed. You know that the media that you are using is moist, you know that it has drained, you know that it the, in watering it, you have gotten rid of any big air pockets and it is ready to support the germination of your seeds. Now, timing of seeds is everything, okay? Um, whether you're taking a rocket into space, consulting your magic eight ball or <laughs> planting seeds, you, the timing is everything. And we are anxious for spring. We want to go down that path toward those flowers, but you don't want to start things too early. Um, I posted this in the Cape Cod Gardening Group on Facebook today because I ran across it as I was looking for my images for tonight. And it gives a rough indication of what gets started when. And let's go through it plant by plant. Okay, but if you want to take a screenshot of this, do or join the Cape Cod Gardening Facebook group on Facebook and check it out there. All right, this is what you start in February, right now if you want, this weekend if you want. Peppers and perennials. And I don't choose those because they both start with P, although as a fan of alliteration, I'm all for it. But um, those are because they take longer. All right, peppers take longer to germinate and longer to grow. And perennials usually take longer to germinate. If you look at the back of that seed packet, sometimes those seeds will say takes uh, 15 days to 15 weeks to germinate or something like that. If you see a long range, which you often do on perennials, you know to start those early because they, they might germinate earlier, but they grow slower and they might not germinate quickly. So peppers and perennials start those uh, this month. In March, you could do it in the beginning of March. I usually do it in mid-March. You start your tomatoes and your eggplants, okay? So those can get started in mid-March. And when I was growing the heirloom tomatoes at Hyannis Country Garden, March 10th was about when I would start them because they would take about 10 days to germinate and then they would be able to grow for a full oh, eight weeks before they got planted out late in May. 
So work backwards from the planting date, but know that if you wanna do your tomatoes and eggplants, start them in March. In April, and you could do this in early April, or you could do it in mid-April, things like broccoli and kale and all of your annual zinnias and cosmos and all of those things, all of the seed packets, which there are many that say, start them four to six weeks before last frost. Now here's a little Cape Cod insider information. Last frost date isn't as important to us as nighttime temperatures. And the reason is we seldom, at least since 1993, when I moved here, we have not had a frost after mid-May, okay? In 1992, Cape Cod had a heavy frost on Memorial Day. That has not happened here since 1992. But what we do have on Cape Cod is cold nights through the spring because of the ocean. The ocean keeps our springs cooler, particularly at night. And if you plant all of your heat loving plants outside, when the nighttime temperatures are still going below 50 at night, those plants are going to get shocked, they are going to be stunted, and they may even die. So for us on Cape Cod, what's more important before the last frost, <laughs> excuse me, is the nighttime temperatures being reliably above 50. That's when we can plant outside, and that's usually the last week in May. <clears throat> okay, know that starting seeds inside in early May is not too late. If you don't get to it before early May, don't worry. If you don't come back from Florida until early May, no worries. You can start seeds in early May indoors, plant them outside at the end of May, and they will be great. They will be off and running. These are just some samples of things that you don't want to start inside. You, of course, never want to start root crops inside, beets and carrots, because the small pots that you plant things in can't form the roots, number one. Number two, they don't transplant well. Uh, you don't want to start lettuce and cucumbers and peas and beans and um, chard and mustard and squashes of all kinds. Uh, you don't want to start those inside. And some annuals, like sunflowers and nasturtiums, you want to put those outside as well. Just because we at Country Garden happen to sell six packs of squash and lettuce and cucumbers and peas in six packs, doesn't mean that it's ideal to start them ahead inside. We sell those in six packs or pots because people want them, because some people are timid about seeds. That's all. Not because it's the ideal way to grow them, because some people are timid about seeds. So just because you see them for sale in containers that have been started ahead of time doesn't mean they need to be or that it's ideal to do them. All of the things on this page, the ideal is to plant the seeds directly in the garden. And there are some seeds that you want to get extra so that you can keep planting them every four weeks outside. Any lettuce that you love, buy a couple, two, three packages and plant it every four weeks in your garden. You will have fresh lettuce all summer into the fall. In fact, almost up to Thanksgiving. I picked arugula through November and into December from my garden. Coriander, lettuce, arugula, if you love them, plant them every four weeks and you will never be without. Now I wanna point out to you that on the Hyannis Country Garden website, which is hyannascountrygarden.com, 
we have informational handouts. If you go to the resources page right here at the top, click on that. Not only will you see the blog that I update every week, you will see informational handouts. We have things like, when can we plant on Cape Cod? We have things like watering and care for newly installed plants. Why doesn't my blue hydrangea bloom? And success with seeds. There's an extensive handout there. Go download the PDF, print it out. There you go. And there are all kinds of uh, good information there. All right. If you are starting seeds in February or March, you should use lights and not depend on your windowsill and the light that comes in in order to make those seeds grow, seedlings grow strong and happy. If you have a greenhouse, go for it. And I'm exceedingly jealous because I do not have a greenhouse. But if you have uh, just a window and you've started seeds now, <laughs> you need to get lights, okay? You And you can use grow lights. You can use regular fluorescent lights. You can get a shop light fixture from a, you know, a home store uh, and you can install that. Here is my basement shop light setup with common fluorescent lights. These are not grow lights, but here is the key. Look at how close those seedlings are to those lights. You want those seedlings to be about three to four inches below those lights. And you can see my setup down in my basement is that I have chains and ropes that I can raise the lights up as the seedlings grow to keep those lights three to four inches above the seedling. Because if they're too far above, the seedlings are gonna stretch and be leggy and weak instead of being strong and firm. And heat helps with germination. I put the fire pit up here to illustrate heat, but of course you're not gonna toss your seeds in the fire pit, all right? <laughs> what you might wanna do is get a heat mat. This is particularly helpful for tomato and cannabis seeds. Both tomatoes and cannabis have similar growing desires. And one of those desires is they want to be warm. A heat mat is an excellent investment. You can get them windowsill size. You can get them so they fit one tray or two trays. I like the two tray ones because I have several trays. Do not use an electric blanket. Do not use a heating pad. You will burn your house down. These are made for getting wet and they are also made to maintain the perfect temperature for germinating most seeds, okay? Don't fall for this. Every year this makes the rounds on social media and it makes me crazy because this is stupid. <laughs> Number one, eggs are tiny. They do not have enough space for a seedling to develop a big root system. And if that seedling cannot grow a big root system, it's going to stop growing. It's going to be stunted and you will not get a big plant, number one. Number two, there are several tomato seedlings in each of these. This is a mistake. You want one seedling per pot. And the reason for that is when plants are growing with their own kind, tomato with tomato, eggplant with eggplant, pepper with pepper, zinnia with zinnia, when they're growing with their own kind, they protect their own. They look out for each other. When their roots are touching, they moderate their growth so they don't outgrow their kin noble, maybe admirable, but totally what we gardeners do not want. We do not want those tomatoes to keep themselves smaller because they're looking out for the other plant in the eggshell, no. So don't do this. And for heaven's sakes, don't fall for this one. 
first of all, somebody scooped up a piece of their lawn with moss and clover and stuck it in an ice cream cone, making it appear like you can start seeds in an ice cream cone. Here is the truth about this. If you fill an ice cream cone with dirt, as I did here, as soon as you water them, this is what happens. You all know what happens to an ice cream cone when the ice cream melts. The cone gets soggy, right? That's why we want to eat it fairly quickly so that we have that crunchy cone and so that it doesn't end up dripping in our laps. Well, as soon as you water the dirt in that cone to make that seed moist, that cone will collapse and later it molds, right? So you will end up with a soggy, moldy, disgusting slug of an ice cream cone. Uh, this is really a scam. It is a, a, a spoof. It is bad advice. Don't fall for it. And if you see it on online, call it out. Call it out. All right. You want a regular container of some sort. And there are any number that you can choose from. You can choose from um, six packs and trays like this, right? Okay. You can choose jiffy pots that you plant right in the soil. You can choose cow pots that are made in Connecticut out of cow manure. I love this product because it's local, number one. And it uses what is otherwise a problem, cow poop, in the environment, right? To make something that's good for gardeners. So cow pots, we've got them at Country Garden. This is my uh, one of choice. You can make your own out of newspaper. If you wanna be sustainable and recyclable, take newspaper, roll it around a wine bottle or a salad oil bottle or something, staple it shut like that. You can fill it with soil as you see, and then you have the newspaper pots that you've created that you put right in the ground. That's a good thing. Or if you have thought ahead and saved all of your toilet paper rolls from the year, you can make them into pots by slitting the sides of on a little bit on the bottom and folding them up like this, okay? And then you put them down, you fill them with soil and you have recycled your toilet paper rolls. So that's fine. You can recycle plastic pots. Maybe it's the pots that you have bought things in over previous years. I do that a lot. This is in my seed starting shed. I don't have a greenhouse, but I do have an insulated shed that faces south where I can start seeds. And I use a lot of the small two inch container uh, plastic pots from the accent plants that we sell at Country Garden. I save those, I rinse them out, I wash them, and I start them every year. You might see people recommending that you sterilize your plastic pots in bleach. Here's true confession time. I have never, ever sterilized my recycled plastic pots. I do rinse them out, okay? I have never had a problem. I use new potting mix and it's always worked well for me. So just saying that. Label, label your containers or the what you know um, the pots in some way these I'm writing zinnias here right because I guarantee you'll forget I get emails all the time from people saying what if I'm what am I growing <laughs> they have planted seeds and they've forgotten what they are human I completely get it but you want to label them okay the bigger the seeds are the the deeper you plant them the finer the seeds are, the more shallow or you don't even cover them at all. So a plant like a, you know, if I was planting these, I think these are maybe castor bean seeds I was growing. Um, those went down a good half an inch into the seed starting mix. A good rule of thumb is to cover the seed with the same thickness of potting mix as the thickness of the seed. So these seeds are about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less thick. They got covered with a quarter of an inch of soil.
but very fine seeds like foxgloves, you want to sprinkle them right on the surface and then just pat them in a little bit. And then it's moist. You've already watered uh, those containers. If you want to water again after you put in the seeds, great. And then cover them with plastic. All right. So I cover them either with recycled plastic bags or a clear trash bag or saran wrap. Um, sometimes I get a really cheap roll of saran wrap, a job lot, fine. And uh, I cover them with that. But after a couple of days, you want to start checking for germination daily because the overachievers might even germinate in three days. Okay. And some of them will take longer, but you want to lift up the plastic and you look for this. And if you see that some have germinated, remove that plastic, all right, so that those little seedlings can grow and breathe. Once you have germinated your seedlings, you want to put a fan on them, on a timer, and have that fan come on a couple hours of day. What that does is a couple fold. It has good air circulation, so you are less likely to have fungal problems. So that's a good thing. Number two, it gives your seedlings the experience that they will have in the real world. All the plants that are outside, what's happening around them, especially on Cape Cod, wind, right? Wind is happening all around them. And so, if you take those seedlings that have not experienced wind from your light situation in your kitchen or your basement or wherever you've started them and you put them outside into the wind in the real world, they are going to collapse. They are going to be in shock. They are going to respond with, what hell is this, right? <laughs> so you want to give them a little taste of that real world with some artificial wind with a fan. Not only that, but that helps them grow stronger because a plant that is moving in the wind becomes a stronger plant. Uh, it is the action, for example, of a young tree seedling waving in the wind that actually creates hormones that signal the roots to grow. That's the plant's mechanism for making sure that it is strong enough to survive. So try and you know, simulate the real world with a fan on those seedlings. Now you don't wanna overwater, but you don't wanna underwater either. When you water your seedlings, water them well, soak the entire root ball, and then wait until you can see or feel that it's starting to dry out but the seedlings have not wilted uh, and before you water again. If you water too frequently, you will get algae or molds growing on the top and you're more likely to get the fungal condition called damping off. Okay, Whew. that's a lot to absorb. Now we're going to type questions in chat, okay? So if you have a question about the seeds, about what's easy to grow, um, Type it in chat and we will now stop my screen share. We're going to escape out of that. Here we go. I'm going to open up the chat and I can get to, hold on, come on, chat window. There we go. All right. Okay, so now let me get back to the top so I can take these in order, all right? I will take them in order of how they came in. And, um, okay, let's see. All right, watching, uh, okay, let's, uh, okay, why does it have to be new potting mix? I have some leftover from last year. By new potting mix, I just meant not mix that you have used before for another plant. If you have some in the bag that's left from before, there's no problem with that, especially if it wasn't left outside to get wet and dry out and get wet and dry out. 
or to get wet and stay wet, which is a problem with potting mix. So, so as long as it's been kept inside and dry, doesn't matter if it's from last year or the year before, or the year before that, it'll be good, okay? Um, it's just, you don't wanna reuse something that you used last year and the seeds didn't germinate in it and you don't wanna waste it. Don't waste it. The stuff that seeds don't germinate in, put it in the bottom of a container when you pot up your container plants or put it in your compost. Uh, but for seed starting, you wanna start fresh. I've heard there's a new purple tomato. Do you know if Country Garden will have those seeds? There are many purple tomatoes. And so I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but we do have several um, varieties of purple tomatoes. I was looking through the seeds today and there are several, there's purples and yellows and oranges and reds. So come in and take a look, okay? The website again, the website is hyannascountrygarden.com. Let me type it in chat. Y-A-N-N-I-S, country, C-O-U-N-T-R. I'm the world's worst speller. Did I ever mention that? Country, C-O-U-N-T-R-Y, garden.com. I drove my English teachers crazy in grade school because I don't spell. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, that's hyannascountrygarden.com. Check it out. The resources page has all those handouts and the resources page has all the links to the blog. And you will find, if you search on the blog post, you will find seed starting information there too. Uh, is your basement heated? I would like to start seeds in the basement, but not heated, but could set up lights if that is enough. All right, Sherry, if it's gonna be in your basement 50 degrees or below, don't do it in your basement, okay? Do it someplace in your house instead. My basement is not heated in that there aren't heat vents down there, but the furnace is down there and the furnace is running. And I would guess that my basement is probably around 60 degrees. It's not real warm and I do put those heat mats for the seeds down there because the air temperature is not ideal. The ideal air temperature for germinating of seeds is 70 degrees and above. So um, that's why I use the heat mats. Once your seedlings are two or three inches tall, you can move them off of the heat mats and use those mats for germinating other seeds, which is what I do. But um, if, if your basement is below 60 degrees, I'd think about where else you might start them. When should we start onions if starting from seed? Do it soon, okay, do that soon. Um, onions can be started by seed anytime now. Here's the thing to know though about onions. Don't scatter a whole bunch of them in one flat that's very close together. You wanna space them out a little bit if you can, okay? Um, and if you can put one seed per pot or per cell, that is ideal. That is ideal. Oh, Cindy says I'm hilarious. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm so thankful. I, you know, you gotta have fun, right? You gotta have fun and we gotta enjoy this. Okay. You mentioned one plat per pot. Do you only put one seed in each or a few and then thin them? I'll tell you what I do. I put one or two seeds in, but I never put more than two unless it's a mistake. Uh, and the reason is if both of them do germinate, I will then very carefully, when they have their first set of true leaves, not the very first seed leaves that come out, uh, those of you who are new to seedlings know that the very first leaves that you see are not the real leaves. They're called seed leaves or cotyledons. And they are basically the plant's quick and dirty solar collector, right? Let's open this up fast and start photosynthesis and not worry about the shape of the leaf. That's what those are. Then the next set of the leaves are what we call the true leaves. Those are the ones that'll look like the plant that you have started or look more like the plant, more like the tomato. Once they have that, the first pair of true leaves separate those two guys uh, or guys and gals 
out from each other, move one of them into one of the pots where nothing germinated, right? Or into a new pot altogether. Because when you grow them in together, they grow shorter. And I don't have time tonight to show all the slides that I have of plants that are growing three or four plants in the same container, seeded at the same time as one seed per pot in other containers, same type of seeds. And the one seed per pot seedlings are three times the size of those crowded siblings. Okay, so um, two plants. The problem I, I have found is that most people, um, they hesitate when they've got a bunch of seedlings, they either hesitate to disturb them to transplant or they really don't want to sacrifice and say, thanks for coming, bye, and pull one out. I'm, I'm completely able to say thanks for coming, bye. But if, if you're going to hesitate to do either of those, better to just put one seed per pot. So know kind of what your basic nature is, what you're willing to do. Or, or if you're so busy that you're not gonna be able to transplant, one seed per pot is better. Don't toilet paper rolls and newspapers get soggy like ice cream cones, nothing like ice cream cones, no. They maintain their integrity until you put them in the ground. And in fact, you know, you may wanna kinda of rip the bottom of them when you plant the plant so the roots will go down in. Eventually they do rot, but they are nothing like the soggy ice cream cones. Okay, so I answered my the question uh, from Katie about the 50 to 55 degrees. You want them warmer. Um, what are the best perennials to winter sow? All right, well, um, I would do any plant that is prone to self-seeding in the garden. Verbena bonariensis is a great one to winter sow. Um, Rudbeckias, echinaceas, great for winter sowing. Most native plants, great for winter sowing because that's how they um, spread. Lupine, you could winter sow if you want to grow lupine seeds. Let me think, what else? Um, those are sort of the, oh, oh um, any of the milkweed family, uh, like the butterfly weed, great for winter sowing. So have fun with that for sure. I'm sorry if I missed this, but how long hours per day do the grow lights have to be on seeds? Liz, I'm so glad you mentioned that. You didn't miss it, I neglected to put it in. Uh, you wanna have those, hour, those grow lights on for 14 hours. You wanna convince those seedlings that it's the summer solstice, right? It is June 21st and they have 14 hours of light and they should, Grow. Now, you don't want your lights, however, to be on 24 hours a day. The interesting thing is plants need exactly what they get in nature, which is light and dark, right? Day and night. And so we as garden people, plant people, we can always learn by looking at nature. What does nature do, right? What is nature? When does nature start to germinate seeds here in our gardens? Well, in my gardens, a lot of seeds germinate in May and in June. And some of them, most notably the pesky uh, summer weeds, they germinate in early July. So nature wants longer days for growing the seedlings. Is Thunbergia a good choice for seed starting? Yes, but that is, um, Thunbergia is a warmer weather plant. So started inside, not as winter sowing outside. It is a plant that does well in warmer conditions. Can you recommend seeds for direct sowing in February or March? I just did that, didn't I? I um, you want to direct sow perennials, particularly those that self-seed, like the ones that I mentioned. If you wanted, you could direct sow something like lettuce or kale or broccoli or chard, but know that you're going to have to, once they come up, you're going to have to transplant them in a timely fashion. 
if you do that. The disadvantage with the whole milk jug, all the seeds in a milk jug method is that you've got a whole bunch of seedlings suddenly in that milk jug. And if you leave them in there too long, they're going to be stunted. Um, so you're going to have to transplant them either to bigger pots and then into the garden or into the garden. And sometimes the timing of that is tricky. So just, just know that. I don't have a lot of garden space. What are good seeds to get um, for here to help pollinators? All right, Julian, native plants. You want native plants. And if you go to that resources page, at hyannascountrygarden.com, there is a whole list of um, plants for supporting pollinators, native plants for supporting pollinators. So go and get that list and download it. Some of them are easier to grow from seed than others, all right? And I would recommend to you, number one, Echinacea, okay? That's easy to grow from seed. Uh, it is a great pollinator plant, it is a native plant. Number two, Asclepias tuberosa, the butterfly weed, um, not milkweed, butterfly weed, it's the orange one. That is also a great native plant for supporting pollinators and easy to grow from seed. So those two are, I think are particularly good. Zucchini, should we plant them directly? Yes, 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 yes. Do not start them inside. Plant those directly into the ground toward the end of May. Once those nighttime temperatures start being above 50, they will germinate quickly. Do I stake mine? No, I do not. I let them scramble over the soil. But if you don't have a lot of space, you might want to not stake them, but you might want to put a leaning um, stakes like this with some fencing and let them grow up the fencing, okay? Whether it's chicken wire or the bigger fencing and the stakes kind of like this angled toward the sun and let them grow up that as a space saving thing. There are also varieties of um, zucchini that are smaller if you are short on space and you don't want to have them, you know, hanging out. Look for some of the varieties that are smaller there are smaller varieties of winter squash as well, like honey nut. So look for those. All of the seed companies put out both the standard size plants and smaller growing ones for people who have smaller gardens. Um, you've only been able to get one harvest and then the plant dies. You might have had powdery mildew, all right? The trick with squash is as soon as those plants are six inches tall, you start to spray them with an organic fungicide such as Revitalize or um, the, uh, what is it? There's, there's another, we've got several botanic fungicides um, and organic fungicides at Country Garden. Um, so come in, talk to Jamie Deeks um, or Nan uh, about the organic fungicides and they will uh, help you out spray them weekly. It doesn't completely prevent powdery mildew, but what it does is stall it so that you can be harvesting squash into the fall, even though the plant will eventually get powdery mildew. All right. I got a greenhouse for Christmas. Ooh, Sarah, I am, I am jealous. How should I heat it so I can start my seeds? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of greenhouse you have. One way to do it is to put jugs of, you know, milk jugs, uh, translucent jugs of water on the back north wall of a greenhouse so that the sun comes in and warms those and they hold the heat. The problem is that really only works from maybe late April on, not so much early for the standard greenhouse. I don't know if the greenhouse that you got comes with heating recommendations, but I would contact whoever made the greenhouse. If it's one of these little kind of things that you get at, um, uh, you know, at Home Depot or Job Lot or something that's just plastic over a frame, 
that's not really a greenhouse. You'd want to start things in there in May, not earlier than that. Okay. I inherited a tiny garden when I moved into my apartment. Everything was an annual. Uh, so I'll be starting from scratch. I live in a one bedroom apartment and growing seeds indoors isn't practical. I want to put in tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce. When can I sow seeds in the garden? All right. If I were you, if I were in your situation, I would buy tomato plants at Country Garden. Because if you've got a small garden, you know, and, and you want to you wanna have those tomatoes be, when you put them in the ground in May, of some size. And you can't plant the tomato seeds in May and have them grow quickly. So if I were you, I would buy the tomato seeds, uh, uh, tomato plants at Country Garden already of some size. The cucumbers and lettuce, however, you put those seeds right in the garden. The lettuce seeds you can grow on the warmest day, the first warm day we have in April, plant lettuce seeds, okay? I always do that. Sometimes they germinate quickly, sometimes they take a while. The thing to know about planting seeds directly in the ground is that it all depends on soil temperature. If the soil is cold, the seeds will take much longer to sprout. That's why the whole saying of planting peas on St. Patrick's Day is ridiculous on Cape Cod because the soil is too cold. And whether you plant them in March on St. Patrick's Day or at the end of April, they will germinate at the same time because the soil is cold. So um, you absolutely can start the tomato, uh, the uh, lettuce early. The cucumber seeds you want to put in the ground later in May, the third or fourth week in May. Um, and by the way, I'm saving chat right now, save chat, so that all of the 15 messages that I'm probably not going to get to, all right, I will answer on the Country Garden blog early next week. So all of you who have not had your uh, messages, your, your chat answered, I will answer them on the blog at Country Garden. And this I think is going to have to be our last question. I have my grow trays in a sunroom with grow lights, good. What temperature could I keep the sunroom during March and April? Do I have to heat this room to 70? I would probably heat it at least to 65. If you are heating it to 60, use heat mats for germination and then the plants can grow on, or you could kind of do a little of both. You could have it heated at 65 for a while during the day while the sun isn't quite as warm and turn it down to 60 at night. I would not have it heated below 60. Um, I would do that. All right. Well, listen, I am saving chat once again. Uh, it's just about time for dinner and I, I'm so pleased that you all could join me. Keep in touch. I'm at clfenari at countrygarden.com. You can check us out at hyannascountrygarden.com and um, look for future happy hours and webinars and in-person events as well. Go to the event site at hyannascountrygarden.com and I really look forward to seeing so many of you in the future. Have a wonderful night and a wonderful weekend, and I'm wishing us all an early spring. Take care.